Thank you, Ken Corla. <coughs> On behalf of the Minister for Justice and Equality, I am pleased to have the opportunity to introduce the Land and Conveyancy Law Reform Amendment Bill 2019 in this House. Following its passage through the Senate, I look forward to our discussion of the provision here this evening. And I was very pleased with the strong support to the Bill from all sides of the Senate, and I trust that the support will also be evident in the House during our discussion here this evening. Put it simply, the Bill's objective of this Bill is to provide further protection to homeowners in mortgage arrears who are facing the risk of repossession proceedings in respect of their home. For the purpose, the Bill proposed is to insert new section in the Land and Conveyancy Law Reform Act 2013. The Bill broadens the range of matters that the Court must take into account when deciding whether to grant possession order in lending institution in respect of the borrower's principal private residence. This Bill, which has the genesis of a private member's Bill that I introduced prior to my appointment as Minister of State, will, I firmly believe, prove to be an important addition to the suite of government measures to protect those who find themselves in mortgage arrears and are facing the prospect of court proceedings for repossession of their home. I am sure that everyone here this evening will agree with me that repossession of the borrower's principal private residence should be the last resort when all other possibility remedies have failed. This government remains committed to helping borrowers in mortgage arrears to remain in their homes. Moving to the main provision of the bill, I want to state again that the government's objective is to broaden the range of measures that the court must take into account when deciding whether to grant possession order to the lending institute in respect of the borrower's private principal residence. The court may also take this broad range of matters into account where, for whatever reason, efforts to ensure the personal insolvency arrangement PIA have failed, or where, despite the borrower's principal proposition and scheme designed to enable borrowers of mortgage arrears to remain in their home. The court repossession proceedings have continued, as required by Articles 1274 and 1285 of the Treaty on the Foundation of the European Union. The European Central Bank has been consulted on the Bill's proposal and the ECB has published its opinion on the 18th of February on its website. Section 1 contains the definition of the Act of 2013, which is required for technical reasons, while Section 2 makes a number of technical consequences amendments to Section 2 of the Act. Section 3 is a key section of the Bill and inserts new Section 2A, containing nine sub subsections into the Act of 2013. Subsection 1 defines the scope of this new section. It means that the Bill's provision will apply only to those, certain, to those cases in which the Court has previously adjourned proceedings under Section 2 of the 2013 Act in respect of the borrower's principal private residency, but also in cases where, prior to the following commencements of the proceedings, the borrower has already engaged in services of a personal sovereignty petitioner to assist in the resolution of his or her mortgages arrears, or the borrower has participated in good faith in the scheme designed to enable the indebted to borrowers to remain in their homes. This means that Section 2A will apply in the following cases, proceedings where the Court had already adjourned in proceedings of its own motion under Section 2A of the 2013 Act, but notwithstanding such an adjournment, there is no result in the PIA. Proceedings where the Court refuses to adjourn proceedings in response to the request of one of the parties under Section 2.2b of the 2013 Act are did adjourn them, notwithstanding such adjournment, there was no result in the PIA. Proceedings which have been adjourned under Section 2 of the 2013 Act, but the borrower has prior to the court hearing. The participant in good, participate in good faith in the scheme to assist borrowers in mortgage stress to remain in their home, or to engage in the service of a PIP to assist him or her to resolve his or her mortgage arrears difficulty, and despite such an engagement, there is no result in the PIA. Subsection 2 provides that when considering whether to make or to refuse to make an order of possession in repossession proceedings in respect of the borrower's principal private residency, a court must take into account of the matters referred to in subsection 3. 
The court may also do so when considering whether to grant any order in considering appropriate in the circumstance of these cases, for example, an adjournment or, or further adjournment in the proceedings. Subsection 3 specifies the matter that the court must take into account of the considering whether to make a refusal to make a possession order. Subparagraph A provides that the court must consider whether making of a procession order would be proportionate in all circumstances of the case. This is a significant development in providing for this matter. The bill recognises the essential role of the court in balancing the insert of both the borrower and the lender when considering whether to make or to refuse to make an order of procession. Subcraft B provides that the court must always take into account the circumstance of the borrower and any dependents who are resident in, in the home. Subcraft C provides that the court must take into account whether the lending institution has made a statement to the borrower of the terms of which he would be prepared to settle the arrears problem in such a way that the borrower and his or her dependents could remain in the home. This means that where there be an onus on the lender to clarify their position. Subparagraph D makes it clear that the court must also consider details of any proposal put forward by her on behalf of the borrower were prior to the following commencement of the proceedings, which would enable him or her or any dependents to remain in their home or to alternatively to secure other accommodation. The Minister has asked me to stress the consideration of the proposal which would allow the borrower to remain in their home while concluding examination of the proposal for the petition of the borrowers in the scheme to assist persons in mortgage distress to remain in their principal private residence. <coughs> Subparagraph E provides that the court must take into account the response, if any, of the lender to the borrower's proposal to remain in their home. This will place an additional onus on the lender to engage in a constructive manner with any proposal put forward by or on behalf of the borrower. Finally, subparagraph F makes specific reference to the conduct of the parties and any attempt to find a resolution to the borrower's mortgage or rare difficulties. The provision makes it clear that the court must take into account of the lending institution's refusal to reluctant to engage in any attempt to find a resolution of the mortgage or rare problem and also that any borrowers refuse to engage in a meaningful manner with the lending institution. Four specifies the certificate, certain additional information that court may take into account when considering whether to make of any order of possession would be apportioned in all circumstances of the case. This includes the overall amount of debt outstanding on the mortgage concerned, the level of arrears due on the foot of the mortgage concerned, and the advised market value of the principal private residency at the date on which the legal proceedings commenced. I, sh I should add that the Minister has provided definition of advised market value in subsection 9. This definition is based on the corresponding definition of, sub of section 2 of the Property Service Regulator Act 2011. will ensure that the market value of the property is valued in a professional objective manner. This a AMV may be provided by the holder of the current licence issued by the Property Service Regulator Authority under the Act. Subsection 5 has a technical purpose, purpose to clarify that the fact that there is no PIA in a specific case may arise because proposal for a PIA has not been made or alternatively such a proposal had been made but the proposal has ended, the process ended without a successful outcome. Subsection 6 identifies the circumstance in which, under the Insolvency Act 2012, that the PIA process is considered to have ended. This applies in the following cases. Where a person's insolvency petitioner has prepared a proposal for the PIA and the debtor has consent to that proposal and is calling for a creditor's meeting, but that meeting does not take place before the expiry of the protective certificate as set out in Section 1063 of the 2012 Act, where under Section 1088B, at the taking of the vote at the creditors' meeting is in relation to, the P to a PIA proposal. The proposal is not approved by the majority of the creditors in accordance with Section 110 as deemed to be approved and the PIA process is terminated. 
where in a case under Section 11A, there is only one creditor, and the creditor does not approve the proposal under Section 11A8, or the personal insolvency petitioner fails to give the creditor a, in a writing notice, written notice, or the proposal before the expiry of protection certificate under Section 11A9, where the court upheld the objection of the to the PIA under Section 120, and the process is deemed to come to an end in accordance to Section 1143, where under Section 115A9, the Court refused to make an order confirming the coming into effect of the proposal PIA following the Court's review under Section 115A, where the debtor is in arrears with his or her payments for a period of six months of the PIA and is deemed to have failed under Section 123. Subsection 7 permits the Minister for Justice and Equality to designate a scheme for the purpose of the subject 1CI and subject 3DI, and such a scheme would have complete with the following conditions. The objective of the designated scheme must be provide those borrowers with mortgage arrears difficulties in respect of their homes with assistance that is reasonably likely to enable them to address these difficulties and facilitate as far as possible to remain in their homes. Secondly, in res in res it is responsibly likely to such assistance will in fact provide under the scheme. Subsection 8 provides the advice market value must set out in a statement provided by the licensees under the Property Service Regulator Act 2011. Subsection 9 has standard provision to contain a number of relevant divisions for the purpose of the new section. Finally, Section 4 contains a standard provision in related to the short title collective citation and commencement provision. Thank you, Orla. Before I conclude, on behalf of the Minister of Justice and Equality, I want to underline again the important urgency attached to this short bill. The key objective of the bill is to provide further protection for homeowners in mortgage arrears who are facing the possibility of repossession of their homes. When enacted, the bill will provide a clear checklist of factors that the court must take into account when deciding whether to grant possession order to the lending institution in respect of the borrower's private residence. The measures provided in, for, in this bill is worthy of the support and will, I believe, prove to be an important addition of suite of the government measure to protect those who find themselves in mortgage arrears and are facing the risk of court proceedings in relation to I commend this bill to the House. Thank you very much, Minister.